The Miami Dolphins didn't get the end result they wanted to on Sunday against the Kansas City Chiefs, losing 33-27 to drop their record this season to 8-5. There's no shame in losing to the Kansas City Chiefs, Kansas City is likely the favorite to win the Super Bowl again this season and the Dolphins gave the Chiefs all they could handle for the majority of Sunday's contest. But the plays the Dolphins did make were outweighed by the ones they didn't, and also the injuries that piled up throughout the course of the game that helped the Chiefs continue to be opportunistic in one-on-one -on -one matchups. The Dolphins saw starters Bobby McCain, Devontae Parker, Mike Jasicki, and Austin Jackson all depart from Sunday's game at one point or another. And the absence of each of them proved to be too much for the Dolphins to overcome, especially when considering Miami's top three running backs and two of their best linebackers, Kyle Van Noy and Alandon Roberts, were all absent from the jump and forced Miami to play handcuffed from the jump, the jump. They traded haymakers with the NFL's defending champions, the Kansas City Chiefs, largely due to their playmaking defense and resurgent quarterback Tua Tungavailoa. Their offensive flaws were too big to overcome, though, in the loss. The defense is ready to compete with and ultimately beat the AFC's elite, but the offense isn't there yet. The Dolphins have been one of the NFL's best stories this season, going from tanking cries to playoff contenders, but there's one key area where Miami is clearly still rebuilding. The Dolphins need to target offensive playmakers this offseason. Here is a preliminary report on the resilience of the Dolphins. Miami was on the case early on forcing two Patrick Mahomes turnovers early on en route to a 10-0 lead in the first quarter, but the points left on the board proved to be a major detriment when the game reached the end of the line. Parker could not bring in a high-point reception in the red zone that would have resulted in a touchdown. Kicker Jason Sanders missed a field goal early on, seven total points on the field in the first quarter. And then the two units that Miami has leaned on so heavily this season, the defense and special teams units, betrayed them in the final two minutes of the first half and the first two minutes of the second half. Kansas City scored 21 points in less than three minutes of game clock between a touchdown pass to Travis Kelsey to close the first half, a deep pass to Tyreek Hill to open the second half, and a 67-yard punt return by W.R. Makel Hardman after the Dolphins' ensuing possession. That's the price you pay when you play the best team in the NFL, you can't afford to blink. The Dolphins did, but in large part to injuries. Both touchdowns on the day from Tyreek Hill were big hitters that came with FS Bobby McCain on the sideline and absent from the back end of the defense. The Dolphins' offense sputtered at times without WR Devontae Parker in play for the team, he failed to log a since reception on the day and the Chiefs were able to feast on tight coverage as a result. But as disheartening a winnable game against the Chiefs may be, the Dolphins have plenty to take pride in. They outscored Kansas City 24-3 in the first and fourth quarters combined. Miami charged back from a 30-10 deficit to cut the lead to 6 with 4.15 to play and nearly got the ball back until Kansas City went for a fourth and one that essentially iced the game. And the comeback effort was fueled not be a standout skill player but rather the Dolphins' rookie quarterback. Tua Tungavailoa finished the day with 316 passing yards and three total touchdowns, smoothly operating a no-huddle effort that was effective despite the absences of both Parker and Jasicki. So, does Dolphins play really need sharp attacks? After a shaky first half, Tungavailoa rose to the occasion in the second. He played a lot faster and with more rhythm and confidence. Tungavailoa had his first 300-yard game and did so despite key drops from receivers Jakeem Grant multiple and Devontae Parker that ended early drives and took points off the board. Later on, the Dolphins lost Grant, Parker and tight end Mike Jasicki to injuries. Tungavailoa thrives when he has weapons he can trust with speed, playmaking ability and separation skills. The Dolphins' two best weapons, Parker and Jasicki, are strong jump ball specialists but nobody on the roster consister consistently threatens defenses deep or in the open field. There's two elements of good news, the Dolphins have shown fight all season, and they did so again Sunday, marching back after the Chiefs went up 20 in the second half Sunday. And Miami is for real on defense. The Dolphins nabbed three interceptions off Patrick Mahomes who came into the game throwing just two on the year, and the last one by Xavier Howard, his league best ninth was one of the best by anyone this year. Byron Jones also forced a fumble, along with his interception. The 8-5 Dolphins are still firmly in the playoff mix and if they can win two of their final three games, versus New England, at Las Vegas, at Buffalo, then they will likely make it.
Looking ahead to the 2021 offseason, when the Dolphins have two first-round and second-round picks coupled with plenty to money to spend in free agency, the Dolphins should target receiver and running back as the top areas to upgrade. This is a team that was without its top three running backs due to COVID-19 Sunday had the Dolphins relying primarily on rookie receivers Lynn Bowden Jr. and Malcolm Perry as well as veteran Mac Hollins by the end of the game. Not exactly the group that helps you light up the scoreboard. Healthy or not, there aren't many game-changing pieces on the roster. That has to change in 2021. QB breakdown. Tungavailoa looked like a different quarterback after halftime for the second consecutive week. He ran the no-huddle offense with confidence and hit Jasicki with two touchdowns. He also showed some chemistry with Bowden that helped him finish with a career-high 316 yards. His ability to bounce back has been fun to watch. Troubling trend, it has been a rough past two weeks for the Dolphins in terms of injuries. Last week, three starters, guard Eric Flowers, linebackers Alandon Roberts and Kyle Van Noy, were injured and missed Sunday's game. This week, three more starters, Jasicki, Parker, safety Bobby McCain, were injured and didn't return to the, ga to the game. Next man up is a common phrase, but Dolphins are running out of good players. Silver lining, the Dolphins became just the second team to intercept Mahomes three times in his career. They also sacked him three times, including Jerome Baker's 30-yard sack. Forcing four turnovers should be enough to win, but it wasn't Sunday. Led by Howard, who has a good case to be Defensive Player of the Year, the Dolphins have gone from arguably the NFL's worst defense to one of the best in one year. At the end, Miami will finish this weekend still a member of the playoff field, even after falling to the Chiefs and dropping to 8-5. But Miami should consider their postseason to start now. Miami's next three are the New England Patriots, the Las Vegas Raiders, and the Buffalo Bills, and the Dolphins will need to win at least two of three to give themselves a fair chance to make the postseason. How likely that is will depend on how injured the Dolphins are after today's costly loss. In all, this serves as a reminder of how far Miami needs to go to be considered among the NFL elites, a friendly reminder that this team can play with anyone on any given week. And also just how bright the future can be in South Florida.